Good morning, church. Go ahead and stand with me to read our call of worship for today. All right, we'll be in John 15, verses 9 through 13. As the Father has loved me, I have also loved you. Remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you these things so that my joy may be in you and your joy may be complete. This is my command. Love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. Go ahead and pray with me. God, just thank you for letting us just gather here today, just come into your house and worship you. Lord, we ask that you open up our minds, our hearts, and just feel your presence and glorify you this morning. We ask that you be with all those that are going through sickness, loss, tough times, just comfort, guide them through everything. Lord, be with the service, be with Brother Andy, be with us so that your word will fall on somebody's heart today. Be with us throughout the week, give us the strength and courage to tell somebody about Jesus. It's in your son's name that I pray, amen. amen. Well, good morning, everybody. It's good to see you. Turn around and uh, shake hands with somebody and just tell them you're happy to see them this morning. way to victory I see the lights of 
glory and I know he reigns because he lives I can face tomorrow because he Because he lives, I can face tomorrow, because he lives, all fear is gone, because I know he holds the future, and life is worth the living just because he lives, and life is worth the living just because he lives. Man, you guys have a seat. Good morning, Burlington Baptist Church. As we're in this Memorial Day weekend, um, I know that I've said this a lot of times, but my father being a history teacher, he reminded us about the fact that our freedoms did not come easily. And this weekend is we have the opportunity to remember those people that have stood in the way and made sure that our freedoms were protected a special time for us to remember those that have given so much, the ones that are with us and the ones that have gone on before us. So I challenge you this week to especially remember those people, not just because it's a special weekend, but we need to do that every week because every time we enter this place, it is because that freedom was worth fighting for. And we are so thankful for those people that thought so. We also want to thank the families who have suffered the loss because a loved one has given uh, so much, the ultimate price for us to be able to have these freedoms. And it's the way that we should always remember that each day. So as we get ready for worship today, just a thought for you. But make this Memorial Day special, not because it's another cookout, but it's because we remember what God has protected for our country so we can be here today. If you're a guest today, we say welcome to you. It's our privilege to have you join us. Uh, we just love the fact that we have guests. My challenge to you as a guest that if you take a moment and you would either scan the QR code on the back of the chair in front of you or stop by our desk, let us get a chance to meet you personally. It'd be wonderful. We're just so thankful. We hope that uh, today, this morning in uh, worship, that you can just draw closer to God. And it's just you too. That you take the words that Andy is going to bless us with today and let those words penetrate our hearts in a special way. And so we don't go out and be the same person that we were when we came into this place. Allow God to change you. We're thankful for the praise music because it leads us in a ways when we can sing those praises back to God. And I told Danny this in the first service. Probably not a better way to begin a service than with the fact that we are here because he lives. Amen? Amen. Amen. So carry that with you. There's a lot going on in the life of the church. A couple of things I just want to draw your attention to. Number one, out there in the foyer, straight back, you'll see the sign-up area for Vacation Bible School. It's quickly coming upon us. I know that Beth is still in need of a few people to uh, do line leading. And 
and possibly even if you can't be here every night, but you might be able to be here one or two nights, see if there's not an area in which you can uh, volunteer. It's such a blessing to be able to see the children come in and as they come in, seeing Jesus Christ shared with them. And it could be the only time in their lives, but it's the opportunity our church takes to make sure that Christ is shared with everybody, in, in not only in our church congregation, but especially in our community who might not have a church home. So make sure that you're praying for Vacation Bible School and if you have that opportunity to volunteer. Number two is this, that hopefully on Thursday night we are trying to put together another gospel to every home night before Vacation Bible School so we can go into some of the neighborhoods and just pass out that information. If you would be available on Thursday night, on Tuesday, call the church office, let us know. We'll get our, fi our plans finalized and try to get that worked out and go out for about an hour or so to a couple of the neighborhoods here. We're thankful this week so many people came up and they were a part of that, and we want to continue that. We've been doing it for over two years now, and it really makes a difference, And especially when you go up to somebody's door and they have a prayer concern or a prayer need, just to be able to pray with them and share that love. So keep that in mind. Last thing is this. You notice there's a lot of people wearing these black shirts like I'm wearing right now. Today was our emphasis for our support of our church in Morgan, Utah, Grace Church in Morgan, and the Roberts family who do such a wonderful job ministering. 100% of the money that we take back from the sale of these shirts. And so if you haven't gotten one and you want to get one, there's still some out there. Make sure you get that. But 100% of this money goes to them. Someone was blessed to be able to pay for the shirts, so we are able to turn around and give everyone or every percentage of the proceeds back to them. And it's just a way that we support them. You might not be aware of this, but I just want to remind you that as a church, one year ago, we decided that we were going to join a three-year partnership. And we support them by giving them $1,000 or raising $1,000 a month. We have so many of you that give to that to all set that $1,000, and we know that that's a, a goal for you for three years. We thank you for that continued support. And if you want to join, um, that's online. You can do it through the church website. Um, you can set it up. I'd be happy to help you walk through those things. But you're supporting two families that are just pouring their lives into an area, and they're seeing the benefit from it. The church growth is phenomenal, and their ministry in that area is great, too. So we just want to support and come alongside. We actually have the privilege of going out and serving with them, and hopefully you'll get a chance to do that over the next two years. So don't forget them and be in prayer for them as we move forward. Today's a great day to be in the house of the Lord. Amen? Amen. So as we move into worship right now, let's just go to the Lord and thank him for the opportunity to have this day. Father, we're so blessed. And a lot of times we take it for granted. We stay busy. We've got other things that distract us. But as Christians, it's not just remembering what we have on a Sunday, but it's remembering all the times of the things that give us the freedom so we can worship you freely. And Father, in our country, we've been blessed because so many people have given their lives in service for our country, and they've stood in the way to make sure that our freedoms are protected. And as we move forward, let us continue to have that bold uh, ability to make sure that our church doors are always open, and that we're able to come in and, and just worship you and give you the praise for the things that you bless us with. Father, this Memorial Day weekend, it's not just about having a grill out and having families together, but more importantly, we take this time especially set aside each year when we can remember those people that gave that actual service to save our freedoms. So let us take that into account. Let us add that into our prayer. Let us always be thankful and understand the gift of having you watch and care for us each day. Father, as we join together in this time of worship, just let your spirit move among us. Change us in a mighty way. Bless the words that Andy are going to share. Bless the songs that the praise team are leading. Just let it pour out from our hearts today. And Father, let us always remember that this is about you when we walk in this place. Father, we love you and adore you. We pray all these things in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, could you guys stand with us again as we uh, continue to worship this morning?
You're still enough. Keep me within your love. My heart will sing your praise again. Your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness. Faithfulness. Still in your hands, this is my confidence. You never fail. Your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness. Faithfulness. I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence. You never. still stands. Great is your faithfulness, faithfulness. I'm still in your hands. 
church. Man, is, is that where your confidence is this morning? He never failed you yet? And guess what? He never will. He never will. That's our God. Thank you, Brother Danny. This is Memorial Day weekend, obviously, and we certainly want to take time to remember those that have paid the ultimate price so that we might enjoy the freedoms that we do here in this nation and know how fragile they are. We look around the world and there are so many nations and people groups that don't enjoy what we enjoy, can't worship freely like we do. And we're so thankful for those that went to foreign fields and fought and gave their lives. I think about my own father who served in World War II. Those of you that know that history uh, of the Battle of the Bulge, right? Our, our guys were surrounded and the German commander sent word, you need to surrender, we've got you surrounded. And our commander sent back that one word response of nuts, we're not going to surrender. Uh, and uh, if you know that story, there was a train coming in with uh, American GIs loaded on that train to help try and uh, get those guys free from that from being surrounded by the Germans. And my father was on that train, and that train was blown up. And my father nearly lost his life there, and he watched several of his buddies lose their lives there. And we need to never forget the price that was paid uh, by so many. You all have likely stories as well, uh, similar to that one. We're going to be talking about uh, defining moments again. I started this several weeks ago. We talked about that very first Sunday about how we can have joy and peace, God's joy and God's peace in every defining moment. Uh, then we talked about the greatest defining moment that anyone will ever experience, and that is uh, to be saved. Uh, there's no other greater defining moment than that. And, uh, and then we looked at the seasons of relationships. We talked about marriage and preparing for marriage. That will likely be, for most people, the second biggest uh, decision that they ever make next to trusting in Christ as Lord and Savior. Uh, and then we, during Mother's Day, we talked about Abigail, a woman of courage, and how she literally put her life in between danger and her family to rescue her family. She was a, a woman of great faith and great courage. And in a defining moment that threatened the, the lives of her very family, she, uh, she stepped up by faith, and God did a, a wonderful thing through her, uh, her d demonstration of faith. And then today I'd like to talk to, to you all about this morning about when defining moments hurt this Memorial Day weekend, when defining moments hurt, Jeremy Camp, a Christian singer-songwriter, he, he wrote a song called He Knows, and here's the chorus to that song. He's, he wrote, He knows Jesus, of course. He knows every hurt, every sting. He has walked the suffering. He knows. He knows. Let your burdens come undone. Lift your eyes up to the one. He knows. He knows. Jesus knows. He knows your pain and your suffering. And, and while we think especially of those who have given their lives in service to our country and those families that sacrificed right along with them, we also are mindful of just people who have lost loved ones, maybe this year even. Maybe it's been recent for you, and the pain that you feel, that grief is right at the surface of your heart or Maybe it's been years ago, but you're never very far from a memory, a thought of that person that was your loved one that you cared so deeply about. And so we want to talk about what happens when defining moments hurt. I got a text yesterday from one of the pastors that I serve uh, in my region, uh, this part of the state of Kentucky, as, as your servant at the Kentucky Baptist Convention. 
and I serve a, a cohort of pastors. There's about 12 pastors that are on a, this, this cohort, and he texted all of us and said, pray for my wife's nephew and, and his family. They, their three-year-old son was hit by a car and killed. I mean, I just I can't imagine that pain. Um, and so when we come to moments like this, we experience a defining moment that hurts so deeply. What are we supposed to do with that? How do we move forward when pain is so crushing in our lives? Well, we're going to look at John chapter 11. I invite you to turn to your copy of God's Word or boot it up there on your phone, your Bible app. John chapter 11, and we're going to look at some selected verses through this chapter. And if you're familiar with it, you know this is the story of Lazarus, the brother of Mary, Mary and Martha, who is really sick. Uh, and they sent word to Jesus that Lazarus was sick. So let's pick it up at verse 3 of John chapter 11. It'll also be on the screen. So the sisters sent a message to him, Lord, the one you love is sick. When Jesus heard it, he said, This sickness will not end in death, but it is for the glory of God, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha, her sister, and Lazarus. So when he heard that he was, when they heard, he heard that they that he was sick. He stayed two more days in the place where he was. Then after that, he said to the disciples, "Let's go to Judea again." So Lazarus, the one is described, the one that Jesus loved, and he did love. He did love Lazarus. Uh, was sick, and Mary and Martha send word to Jesus. The one you love is sick. It's, it's sort of like a prayer, isn't it? Lord, we need you. Our, our brother is not doing well and is near death. Would you come, please, and help us? It was a, a prayer. And Jesus responds. He said that this sickness will not end in death, but it is for the glory of God, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. You know, ultimately, this sickness would not end in death. Although we know that, as we read along here, that Lazarus is going to die. But ultimately, it would not end in death, but it would be for the glory of God. And if you're going through a defining moment that's a hurtful defining moment, a painful place uh, in your life, can I just encourage you, man, now's the tr time to trust in the Lord and believe that he still holds you in the hollow of his hand. If you're his, you're his forever. He'll never turn you loose. And you can, by the grace of God, see the Lord glorified through even the most painful places in our lives. See, Jesus saw this as an opportunity to glorify the Father. And that was Jesus' highest priority. And listen, brothers and sisters, it needs to be ours as well. To give God glory. I, I don't understand how all of these things work together. I just believe that even in the painful place, and maybe especially in the painful places of our lives, we're able to give God greater glory. Often God receives the greatest glory in our lives in the most painful places of our lives. Has that been your experience? You know, when we go through a hard time, especially maybe even one where it's producing grief and it's threatening to crush our lives and we hang on to Jesus knowing he's hanging on to us, man, people see that and they take notice of that. They go, what is it about them that when every other person I know, when they would go through something like this, man, it would crush them and defeat them and they'd become bitter and, and angry and, and this person's not responding like that. I think it gives God glory when we bear testimony to the truth that even though this hurts, and it is okay to grieve, Christians are allowed to grieve, but we don't grieve as those who have no hope. You have a hope that's beyond this life, that's bigger than this life, held firm for us by the Lord Jesus in heaven. And so Jesus saw this as a place to give God glory. Jesus loved this family, and it seemed odd that Jesus loved this family, and, and the next thing was that he delayed. He stayed two more days where he was. Well, it's because 
He wanted to give the Father glory, and he knew that that's what it would take in this moment. And sometimes when you and I go through hard challenges in life, we wonder where God is, and I think God can handle our questions like that. But can I just remind us that God's delay does not mean that God is denying us. He's just working in his own time. You know, Warren Wiersbe said, God's love for his own is not a pampering love. It's a perfecting love. That God desires for us when we go through those hard times. He wants to build something into our lives that he knows we're going to need down the road in our lives. And this will be something that gives him greater glory. You know, it's one of my great joys to be able to tell people that Jesus loves them. I, I, I've shared this with you all before. I think that in a restaurant or, you know, you're at a counter somewhere uh, talking to a, a clerk or someone working a register or just someone you meet along the way, I'll ask them this question. Has anybody told you that Jesus loves you yet today? Maybe some of you all have used that in your life. I stole that from Dr. Matt Queen, he's the professor of evangelism at Southwestern Baptist Theological Seminary, so you feel free to use it as well. I'll ask him, has anybody told you Jesus loves you yet today? And sometimes they'll look at me like, you're strange, dude. <laughs> you're strange. And I'm okay with that, because awkward never killed anyone. I'm okay with that. But sometimes I'll see a tear start to form in their eye, and they'll say, no, no one has today. And I'll say, you mean I get to be the first one to tell you today that Jesus loves you? And they'll say, yeah, I guess you are. I say, well, it's my honor to tell you that Jesus loves you. You know what? I can say that, and I don't need to know a thing about that person to know it's true. Because Jesus loves them, and he loves you. And the cross is proof of the love of Christ for you and for me and for this whole world. Amen. He loves you us but for the child of god it's not a pampering love it's a perfecting love see jesus was operating on a divine timetable wasn't he god has his own sense of timing second peter 3 8 says with the lord one day is as a thousand years and a thousand years as one day with god his his perfect timing is always right on time he's never late He's never early. God is never in a hurry. He's always on time. God means to show up exactly when he shows up. His timing is perfect. And Jesus delayed, but his delay revealed that God is in control and he operates on a different timetable than you and I operate on. That's especially important to remember in our culture today where we are accustomed to, our culture is conditioning us to expect things immediately. Like, we're going to order it from Amazon, and it better be here tomorrow. Can, I mean, like, I lived in a day where things took weeks, okay? Uh, I, you all don't, some of you all don't know that experience, although I guess through the pandemic we saw some of that maybe. But, uh, we, we, like, we got microwaves. I don't want to wait to cook this food. I want it heated within a minute so I can eat it now. And I'm grateful for microwave, right? But it, all those things sort of condition us. We pull into the drive through line, and if we don't have our food in hand in like five minutes, we're like, going, what in the world are you all doing in there? I want to speak to a manager. I'm going to write a, stir, you know, a, a strongly worded letter or a text because letters take too long. You have to do a text instead. I think about Wendy's where I had a friend, he said he'd pull up and I'll, he'd get to the window. And I'll take $5 worth. Of, of what, sir? Uh, $5 worth. Well, what do you want? Well, it doesn't matter. You're going to mess it up anyway, so I'm just, just give me $5. <laughs> that, that, has, that has nothing to do with what I've been talking about. I don't know why I just shared that. Poor old Wendy's. But here's the point of this. Are you willing to wait on God? Are you willing to wait on God? Because if you, if you run ahead of God, listen, I've done it. I'm here to testify. It doesn't end well. You, if you wait on God, you'll get 
what God wants for you to have. If you run ahead of him, you'll get what you want, and it won't work out well. Ultimately, it will not work out well. So Jesus makes something clear here in John chapter 11, uh, uh, verse 14. So Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus has died. I'm glad for you that I was there so that you may believe, but let's go to him. Jesus first out said that Lazarus is asleep, uh, and then uh, he tells them plainly because the disciples didn't understand, well, if he's asleep, he'll, w- he'll wake up, right? And Jesus said, no, he's died, and we need to go to him. The word believe is used seven times in the story of Lazarus here in uh, John chapter 11. And, and Jesus' delay did not mean denial. He was going to do something for God's glory so that God would get greater glory. You know God deserves all the glory, amen? He deserves all the glory. Our God, the highest heavens cannot contain the glory of God. And we, when we live our lives for his glory, uh, then we live lives of great significance. It's, 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 it's an amazing thing that when we live for the glory of God, we also get the blessing of the best possible life we can live here on planet Earth. Those two things go together perfectly. But when we go through defining moments where we experience grief and pain, we just need to know that pain is almost always a better teacher than prosperity. Pain is almost always a better teacher than prosperity. You think about in in your life when you've gone through places of pain or grief and you cry out to God in desperation because we know we need him. God, would you help me? I'm in this very painful place and, and God responds to that cry of his children. But you know, when we're experiencing comfort and ease and prosperity, our temptation is to think, I'm okay now. We, we become casual, comfortable towards God. It's in those painful places where if we'll lean into the Lord instead of becoming bitter towards the Lord, that we experience greater growth. The roots of our lives, our spiritual lives, sink deeper in those painful places. So let me ask you these questions. Are you going through a painful place in the road of your life, in this part of the journey of your life? Everybody is going through a hard time, right? Everybody you meet is either going through a hard time or they just finished up going through a hard time or they're about to go into a hard time or maybe you got the combo package. Somehow all three of those are true for you. Everybody you meet is going through a challenging place, but maybe this is a really particularly painful place in your life. What does your response teach you about your current spiritual condition? That's a more important question. Because when we go through hard times, it reveals about uh, it reveals to us about our spiritual condition, doesn't it? I read a long time ago that someone said Christians are a lot like tea bags in that our true flavor doesn't come out till we get in hot water right? Uh, so when, when you go through a difficult place, how do you respond? What comes out of your mouth? What's the attitude of your heart? And it, it, that's, that's an important place to take a spiritual inventory of our lives. And it might be that sometimes you're like me where what comes out of my mouth or the attitude of my heart isn't good. And aren't you grateful for our patient God? That he allows us to have moments like that where we can have an honest, here, here I am spiritually moment. And God, would you help me now to move on from this immature response? Lord, would you strengthen my faith so that my spiritual condition can look more like Jesus and a lot less like me? Have you experienced the grace of God in the middle of your painful place? I bet if we, ha- if we had the time, I'm confident, we could have testimony after testimony of people in this room who went through a really hard place, a grievous place in your life. 
And yet it was there that you felt the grace of God like never before in your life. I bet we could get testimony after testimony. You know, pain can sometimes cloud our spiritual vision. But even when you can't see it, you can know that his great grace is still at work in you. He still holds you. He won't turn you loose. If you're his, you're his forever. And especially in that painful place, his grace is at work for you. In Philippians 4, Paul wrote, Rejoice in the Lord always. In fact, that's the part of the text that I use for that very first Defining Moments uh, sermon series uh, message. And uh, what seems impossible in that moment uh, is, is very possible in the Lord. To rejoice in the Lord always, even in those painful, defining moments, yes. Because we're joyful in the Lord and not necessarily about our circumstances. Because we are in Christ, we can know his joy and his peace in the middle of our challenging and hurtful circumstances because we know he's with us and he loves us and he cares for us so don't be afraid when you're called down that painful place lean into jesus so uh, jesus heard that cry and now this jesus comforts by his presence and with his words let's pick back up at verse 21 Then Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother wouldn't have died. Yet even now I know whatever you ask from God, God will give you. Your brother will rise again, Jesus told her. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me, even if he dies, will live. Everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord, she told him. I believe you are the Messiah, the Son of God, who comes into the world. You know, when when you and I grieve, we may have thoughts like this. She was my rock. How am I going to go on? Or we had so many plans for the future, and all that has come to an end. Or maybe you think this, why did he or she leave me? You know, it's not unusual when people grieve to even become angry at the person who's, who's died, because why did they leave me? You may think, the dream I had, it's over. I had so many plans, these dreams, and, and they're over now. Now what? Or maybe you, you, you would say this, I, I, I'm in shock, I'm numb, I feel stuck, and I don't see a way forward. Maybe you ask something like this, why, Lord, why? I always appreciated evangelist David Ring. David had cerebral palsy, and, but man, he loved Jesus, and he, he could preach the word kind of was very halting in his speech because of his cerebral palsy, but he tells the story of when his mother passed away, and he was very close with his mom. And he, he, he remembered crying out to the Lord, Lord, why would you take my mom? Why do I have cerebral palsy? He said, I was feeling sorry for myself, and I was asking these why questions. Lord, why? Why? And he said, but heaven was silent. And then he said, I started to ask what questions? Lord, what do you want me to learn from this? Lord, what do you want me to do for you in the middle of my pain? He said, when I started to ask what questions, I started to hear the voice of God. See, why questions are a mystery, and I believe all of that will be settled one day for us before the throne of God. I believe this one second in the presence of God, why questions won't matter anymore. But what questions? Those are important when you're going through a painful place. And the word of God is our comfort, isn't it? I think about in all the funerals that I've preached 
course, I will always share the word of God. You would expect that, right? That's what Christians do. But I, I believe it's not just because that's what we do, but I, I believe it's because the scripture, the word of God is powerful. It comforts people's hearts. So we lean into the word of God when we're going through a hurtful moment. And if you're going through that in your own life, a defining moment, and it's, it's causing grief and pain in your life, you can ask the Lord what questions. What am I supposed to do, Lord? What do you want me to do with this one and only life that you've given me? The rest of this one and only life that you've given me. Well, Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. She said, I know he'll rise in the resurrection on the last day. See, in the Old Testament, the resurrection was there But it was sort of a shadowy doctrine that a lot of people didn't understand. A lot of Old Testament saints didn't understand. In fact, there's a whole sect of Judaism, the Sadducees, who didn't even believe in the resurrection. And so verse 25, Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me, even if he dies, will live. Everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? Do you believe this? Do you believe this, my brother or sister? See, Jesus takes the doctrine of the resurrection out of the shadows and he centers it on himself. He is the resurrection. Our faith is not just a set of doctrines that we mentally assent to. Our faith is centered on the person and work of Jesus Christ, who is the the resurrection. In Jesus, every doctrine is made personal. And if you know him, you have everything you will ever need in this life and for eternity to come. Because he is the resurrection. Jesus moved the resurrection from just being a future event to a present reality. Wherever Jesus is, resurrection power is available. And if you've been saved, you have the power of the resurrection in you. Uh, Eternal life is not just something that begins at the end of this life. The moment you were saved, you received eternal life. Because Jesus lives, you live. He is the resurrection. If your heart's tender because of a defining moment that's producing grief you've experienced a loss you're in pain i think the lord is saying to you this morning i I know that you hurt trust in me i am the resurrection i defeated death on the cross and if your loved one is mine they're with me and you will see them again I share with you about my Uncle Mac. This will be week number three. <laughs> he had to say goodbye to his beloved Aunt Mary. Would have been 70 years of marriage this July 13th. She was 96. Uncle Mac's 98. I called him Friday. I said, how you doing, Uncle Mac? He said, I'm pretty lonely, man. You can imagine. I tried to comfort him. I just tried to listen more than anything else. But when we go through moments like that, we can be assured that Jesus, who is the resurrection, is with us. He's with us. What is, so, so, so Jesus heard the cry, and, and he comforted with his presence and with his word. And then this Jesus does what only Jesus can do. Let's pick back up at verse 38. Then Jesus, deeply moved again, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Remove the stone, Jesus said. Martha, the dead man's sister, told him, Lord, there is already a stench because he has been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, Didn't I tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they removed the stone. 
Then Jesus raised his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you heard me. I know that you always hear me, but because of the crowd standing here, I said this so that they may believe you sent me. Verse 43, after he said this, he shouted with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, bound hand and foot with linen strips and with his face wrapped in cloth. Jesus said to them, unwrap him and let him go. What a miracle. Jesus is the Lord, and he's the Lord over life and death. And he called Lazarus from the dead. Only Jesus can bring dead people back to life. Can I tell you, he did it for me when I was 18. I knelt at the side of my bed where mom still lives there in Dearborn, Michigan. I knelt down a dead man. I cried out to Jesus. I got up a living man. I was made alive in that moment. Have you experienced new life in Christ? Only he can, and he's willing. He is the resurrection, after all. He says, let him go. After four days in the grave, let him go. Here's here's some important things as we kind of land the plane. When you're going through a defining moment that hurts, And you already have, likely, if you've lived life on planet Earth for any length of time. And if you haven't, you will. Uh, It's just a matter of time, right? So when you go through a defining moment that hurts, I want you to remember three things. Number one, Jesus knows. He knows about your pain. He's intimately aware. He carries you in the hollow of his hand. He holds you there. And in Jesus, hurtful defining moments can still be hopeful defining moments. Now, there may be times where hurt doesn't want to hear about hope, and he knows that too, and he's okay with that. If you're struggling, you're not sure about why this had to happen, and you really miss that person, and maybe you're angry, you're struggling with some anger, those things are all normal responses And our God can handle those. But you just need to know that he is still with you. If you're his, you're his forever. He knows. Psalm 34, 18. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. He knows. He's close. And then this. Not only does he know, Jesus is completely trustworthy. He's calling you and I to trust him in every part of the journey of our lives, but especially in those painful places. And though we may not always see it and may not see it at all, this side of heaven, our pain is serving a greater purpose than we know in the moment. God is using that somehow, some way, for his greater glory. And he's trustworthy. Charles Spurgeon said, Men bless bless God while he gives him plenty, but the Christian blesses him when he smites him. He believes he is too wise to err and too good to be unkind. He trusts him where he cannot trace him, looks up to him in the darkest hour, and believes all is well. That's what faith is in Christ does for the believer. Even sometimes through clenched teeth, because we're going through such a painful place, we're still able to declare to the the Lord, I know that you got me, and so because that's true, all is well. All is well. If you belong to Jesus, be assured that his great grace is holding you in the hollow of his hand perfecting you in a way that we can't really begin to understand right now. But it's true. He's trustworthy. Are you trusting him right now in your painful place? And then this, for the believer, pain and death don't get the final word. Pain and death don't get the final word. Remember, Jesus is the resurrection and the life. 
Uh, he tells you and me that there's coming a day when he will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Grief, crying, and pain will be no more because the previous things have passed away. Revelation 21, 4. Do you believe that this morning, friend? Is that, is that the, the truth in your heart here this morning? Uh, that there's coming a day because he was raised, we will be raised. And there's coming a day where we'll be with him forever before the throne of God. Joy unspeakable. No eye has seen, no ear has heard the things that God has prepared for those who love him. There's coming that day. And sometimes we need to remind ourselves of that. I think often we need to remind ourselves of that day that's coming. And so because of that, we can know that his power and his presence carries us. In pain and death, they don't get the final word. Jesus is the final word. He knows. In Ephesians chapter 1, verse 7, the Bible records these words, In him, in Christ, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, in accordance with the riches of God's grace. See, before the resurrection, there was a cross, wasn't there? And that word redemption uh, is the Greek word apolutrosis. Now, it's not the same word that John uses here when Jesus said, let him go or loose him, but it's a similar word. Apolutrosis was a word that was used in the slave auctions. If someone was going to apolutrosis a slave, if they were going to redeem a slave, they would purchase them off the slave block, but not to continue to enslave them. They would purchase them with the express desire of setting them free. That's what that word meant. That's how it was used in secular culture. Purchase someone out of slavery to set them free. And that's what Jesus did for you and me. He redeemed us from our slavery to sin. What we could never do for ourselves, he did for us by means of the cross. He redeemed us by his own blood. And we have been set free. He whom the Son sets free is what? Free indeed. Free indeed. Listen, unless Jesus comes back, death will find all of us, won't it? I heard someone say, none of us are getting out of here alive. <laughs> and so the important question is, are you ready? Are you ready? No other question really matters until you answer that question. Has there been a place in your life where you know that you've crossed over from death to life and the blood of Christ was applied to your sin debt and it was washed clean and you were made whole and you were declared not guilty and you became a child of God a new creation in Christ has there been that place for you and if you're here or watching and that's, that's not happened for you then Man, good news for you. The truth is Jesus died on the cross to set you free from this, your enslavement to sin. You can't do it. He did it for you. And in a moment, I'm going to pray, and if that's you, and you're feeling the presence of God convicting you of your sin and drawing you to the Father, then this is the day when you need to turn from your sin and trust in Jesus. You might pray a prayer something like this, Jesus, I've tried to make my life work apart from you, but I'm turning from my sin, and I'm putting my trust in you, the resurrection and the life. Lord, would you come into my life and be the Lord and Savior of my life? You, you pray that in your own words. It's not really even the words. It's faith. We're saved by grace through faith. If, you're, if you are ready to be saved, you just cry out to Jesus. When I pray, you cry out to Jesus, Lord, save me.
He can and he will. And maybe you're here and you're a believer and that pain is right at the surface of your heart this morning. That defining moment that has caused you grief. And you're wondering how you're going to go on. Can I just invite you to lean into the heart of God? To trust in Him? To give Him your pain? To, to be honest with Him about where you're at? He already knows. And ask Him to give you the grace to be able to move through this place so that he gets glory and you get to grow deeper in Christ because you're trusting him through this painful circumstance. I don't know where you're at this morning, but in a moment we're going to give a response time and that just means it's the opportunity for you to come and say, hey, I gave my life to Jesus this morning or I'm struggling with this painful place. Or maybe you want to come up to the Lord's table, either to my right or left, and as an individual or a family. And maybe you just want to take the Lord's Supper together. The altar's open. Maybe God's calling you to pray. And there's something about coming out of a seat, if you can, if you're able, and, and to come here and pray. But when we give that invitation, don't wait. And don't delay. You take the first step, and the Lord, he'll carry you the rest of the way. Dear Lord, thank you so much that our Savior is the resurrection and the life. And even though a child of God may lay down this earthly tent, this, this body, one day we know that because he's been raised, we will be raised. Lord, we look forward to that day when if we're alive, Lord, the dead in Christ will rise first and we'll meet them in the air with Christ and we'll see him as he is. Won't that be a glorious day? I pray, dear Father, that you would have complete sway in every heart for your glory and for our eternal good. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. Would you stand and you come this morning as the Lord. As I am without one breathe, but that thy blood wash it for me, and that thou bid me come to.
Good to see you guys this weekend. Um, Dollar Club boxes are the clear boxes. I like to say it's like an Easter egg hunt now. They keep moving them around a little bit. There's two of them, so you can find them. It's part of the fun. Uh, the offering boxes are in the back as well. They got a little bit of a facelift, uh, so you guys look out for those. Also, there's the QR code on your seat. Let's pray together. Lord, just thank you so much for this opportunity to come into your house, Lord, and just to learn about, about you and, and what you mean to us, Lord, and just continue just just uh just to understand what Jesus meant to us. Lord, help us to go find somebody this week to tell about it. We shouldn't hold that to ourselves, and we shouldn't be scared of talking to somebody about him. Lord, help us to find those opportunities. Be with us. Be with our church as we just continue to, to move forward. We just thank you so much for the way you bless us. And, Lord, just uh, be with Morgan Grace Church as we just hopefully that we can continue to be a blessing to them. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. 